Hello, hello. Hello, hello. How you doing, man? I am good. Let me turn off your stream. Uh, that sounds good. Sounds good. Perfect. Great. Yeah, I got it. I'm right, excited so, for it. Hell yeah. So uh, I see in the in the email uh, that you we, we talked about just a second ago. Uh, Basically, your overall questions were, where should I be around five minutes uh, with your max out uh, in the 11 and a half minute range? So you need to speed up. So we we'll definitely talk about your macro a lot. Um, when to do things like move out and scout, you're not really sure to understand how to scout or do medevac drops. Uh, so we'll, I mean, I'll, I'll give you some insights as to like maybe triggers you can think about that would make you want to do that. And then uh, APM is super slow. I, I would say that's something that's not really my opinion of APM is not really something you should try to actively improve like by itself because APM is something that will just increase when your game knowledge increases and you hesitate less and you just know what you're doing instead of like don't know what you're doing it, it makes everything just flow better and you're, you'll be like wow I'm playing so much faster because everything is just making sense um, but other than that if anything at uh, this uh, so I, I guess I'll ask you a question now uh, with some, some ideas about what you were looking for and my question to you would be uh, and I can tell you're Terran from that, but what league are you sitting at at the moment right now? So I'm in, I went up to Plat and I was okay. just doing BCs all the time. Um, and then I found BTGM <laughs> and I dropped back down to gold two. Um, but now I'm back in gold one and on the verge of getting back to Plat, but I've got a pathway to get to better, which is what I was kind of maxing out where I was. So what I really liked about the BG, BTGM series was I was figuring out that I could actually stop capping out so yeah. um so I'm, I'm i'm sort of back to where i was before um but yeah i i i'm my macro is not clean but before i would just do you know just build units and attack and stuff and now i'm trying to learn how to macro properly so i'm i'm, I'm still pretty early in my macro macro journey sure I'd that, say. that sounds good so that, that like looking and, and i'm trying to see where i'm different to where you you know your your series are and sort of that i'd like to Look at some of that if that's possible and then i kind of tend to freak out when anything happens i think sim city might be a better uh game so um <laughs> i'm yeah. trying to uh figure out how to uh, appropriately respond to uh incoming okay uh that sounds perfect uh so uh what i'll do to make this really easy peasy is I'm gonna go ahead and uh screen share with you really fast on discord and you can just full screen this or to now you, you'll be able to see my starcraft and you can see what i'm like green boxing and where i'm looking at on the camera so it makes it really really easy for you to follow along uh and then at I, i'll just kind of break it down with you we, we'll have a conversation about what's going on with you and uh at any point in time if you ever have a question and i'm like mid-sentence and you're like wait 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 hold on what did you say or i didn't catch that by all means feel free to stop me or like interrupt me i it, it doesn't matter to me at all i want to make sure you're always getting as much as you can out of this uh like you know so you don't like forget what you're like, oh shit, I don't remember what he said, or he's going too fast. Um, uh, and then, yeah, we're, we're super chill. Uh, I will kind of just like, awesome. I'll take the reins and just kind of like f point out things that I see that you're, you know, maybe not doing the right order or things that are like, uh, you know, falling behind. And that's, oh, this is why you're late. This is why you're late here. And then I'll give you ideas as well. Like, like we said earlier, uh, when I read your email, um, about how to like set up your scouting and uh, you know how to just make things more efficient, essentially. That sounds great. Yeah. Um, thanks. Yeah. All right. So hell yeah. All right. Let's see what is going on here. So one of the big things, uh, a concept. While we're kind of just getting this game underway here, and it's kind of just opening up, a concept a lot of people don't really respect enough. I would say that have problems maxing out, is building efficiency. Each individual building, and they all add up to the cumulative whole of a total of efficiency. And what I mean by mm -hmm. that is the building needs to have an operational uptime of like 100% or as close to it as you can. And you can see this one's already not doing it. That, like right there, that's that shit. It doesn't seem like much, but that was huge right there. You made two SCVs right off the bat, which was great. But now right here, your SCV pops out of the command center at 24 seconds. And then you don't make another one until uh like 25 uh, it's like 26 25 uh it wasn't it wasn't cute it yeah, wasn't, exactly yeah, it exactly wasn't and yeah, yeah. i mean that that alone 
if you take even if it's like only a second, like one second out of twenty five, you're missing out on a good chunk of like a percentage of total uptime already. If we're talking about just the time of what happened there, and that's something we're going to talk about a lot throughout all of your buildings, because this is something that a lot of people struggle with. Like it'll happen to the factory, it'll happen to the racks, it'll happen to the starport, it'll happen to like multiple command centers at a time, and you got to definitely avoid that as much as possible. So a rhythm you need to get into to fix that would be whatever your command center hockey is, it needs to be something that you're comfortable hitting, like probably one one time every three to four seconds, at least. Maybe even one time every like two seconds or one second. Like and, and then what I mean by that is like, if you're doing nothing, your eyeballs should actually, so you can see my mouse is like, or my green box is like right here. If your eyeballs are in the middle of the screen, your eyes should be like down here. Like, uh, you know, I, I can't really, you can't really see my mouse. You can just see my green box, but you, you know what I'm talking about. Like the, the SCV yeah, yeah. stuff. Where, where it queues up. Yeah. yeah. Your, your eyes should be checking that uh, every single time you go, like, let's say you go six, uh, four or five, six, four or five, six, or whatever your hockeys are. You're like, every time you hit the command center one, you're taking, you're taking a look down here. Every time you take the racks one, you're taking an eye down here on like your Marines and you're just glancing. You're just glancing. You're always just glancing at it. And you're, it's, it's going to get your eyes in a rhythm to like check the bottom. And then every time you check the bottom, like periodically you need to check the top right as well. And we'll talk more about that as we go. It's, it's too early to really be going crazy on the top right. But you should be checking often your total money. And this helps you understand how much shit costs because there's always checkpoints that you're like, I need X amount to afford next building. And as soon as I have it, I'm making that building. And also you need to be also obviously checking your supply to make sure you don't get supply blocked. Uh, so already... If, if you ever miss production like that, it's definitely something that uh, it makes you... I feel like you need to be having a higher rhythm there. Okay, so you're building... There's going to be more of that. No, for sure. I, I'm, I'm, I know there is, for sure. That's why I'm going to harp yeah, on yeah. it more and more. Like, right now, okay. again. This is fucking huge. That was probably, like, four seconds right there of no SCV. That, and then also, when your SCV stopped, like, it was, like, hugging the command center now. So hopefully that doesn't happen for a long time, but that's another thing that'll screw you. That's one out of 14 SCVs. Because he's not, he's no longer counted here. Because he's now no longer active on the patches. He's just touching the command center. So one SCB, another SCB missed for like four seconds, and this guy's now out of commission for a while, which is brutal. No, wait, wait. I mean, I don't think I ever noticed. Oh, that. oh yeah, you fixed it. Oh, you fixed oh, no, it. He, uh, he, he was out of commission. Well, for what like, happened? And so what I think you did is you told your guy to build a gas, and but you told two guys to build. Maybe you right clicked two guys on the gas, or no, you told one to build a gas. But you ended up grabbing an SCV when it had no minerals in its hand, and you said, go touch the command center. So, here, it's about to happen right now. So, right here. I think what you accidentally did was it looked like you were trying to stack a patch, which I'm very proud of you for. If you're already trying to stack patches, great job. Keep doing that. That's fucking amazing. But I am. I have to say, on average, right now, it's costing me. No, <laughs> that, that's a hundred. Uh, but I'm learning. No, I, I, yeah. I know what I'm, I'm. I know what I'm aiming for. Yeah. Yeah, a hundred percent. Like whenever you learn something new, you're always gonna be like, "This doesn't feel very good." And I, like, dude, I was a battle cruiser guy, and now I'm a beta gym guy, and I went backwards. I should just go back to battle cruisers. But like this, <laughs> definitely, like if you get better at this, like it's definitely gonna give you a, a better foundation overall. So I'm glad you're trying to do it and keep doing it. Uh, I think what happened here to you though is somehow. You accidentally misclicked the command center, and when you were trying to stack a patch, because you had minerals in the hand that came back, and then the SCV just immediately turned around and touched the command center again. So maybe you accidentally right-clicked to like try try to select the command center or something, uh, as well. But uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I it it's gonna hurt you if that kind of stuff happens, but just work through it. It's growing pains, and uh, try to keep up progress. But I would say the SCV not mining minerals is not great, but it's actually less damaging to you than not making SCVs, period. This is the most damaging thing you can do to yourself the entire time. Because uh, that SCV didn't produce, then isn't producing for us the game, whereas that guy who's pulled, I've lost like, yeah. a, a good minerals for or whatever sure. he could have collected. Exactly. While he was exactly. A, a, right. a good way I like to explain this, because it's very true, and a lot of, again, a lot of people don't think about it like this, is let's just say your build, like beta gym style, is going to go to like four base saturation. So you're going to take all the bases on the top of the map, and you're like, okay, well, I'm going to have about like 85 SCVs. This base is not going to be one fourth of all your SCVs. Even even though it's going to be saturated with, with one fourth of your SCVs, this base is not going to make one fourth of your SCVs. And the reason why is because you don't have four command centers right now. 
So this command center is going to make probably like 50% or like 60% of all of your SCVs because it's going to make SCVs that are going to transfer to new bases. And then the natural is going to probably make like 25 to 30. And the third base is going to probably make like 5 to 10%. And the last base might make like 2%. Because you're going to be done by the t by the time this base is done, you should already have like all your SCVs you pretty much need, pretty much. Like this base might make like four SCVs and that's it, or like three SCVs or two SCVs or whatever, depending on how good of a job you did with your cur or current base. So this base is going to probably pump like forty SCVs or like forty five SCVs just out of this base, which is crazy. So you definitely don't want to miss any time because every time you miss one, all like if you're like oh no SCV like so don't even include the first ones you have because they're already out. But SCV number four that I made, or SCV number six that I made, has been delayed by eight seconds. So SCVs seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, all the way to like SCV forty-three or whatever, how high, however high it's going to go, is they're all delayed. So it, it's crazy, and, it, and then it puts more stress on your other command centers to make more faster because you're missing time on the first one, and it just overall decreases your income because you have less SCVs mining new bases as fast as you would otherwise. So it is huge at damaging your economy. Got it. Yeah. Good. Now I see him. <laughs> just no, for sure. Out. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> just dancing away. Uh, do you play? Do you play with health bars? Uh, out of curiosity, some people don't. But if you if you don't, I would highly recommend you do. Uh, I mean, I know what the health bars are. I'll check out the settings on it. Sure. Too, I, if, if, sure. if you if you do or don't, it's super easy. You just go to options, gameplay, and you just make show unit life bars on always instead of normal. Okay. Because what'll happen with normal is is it doesn't show all of them unless they're like selected or unless they're like taking damage. So, uh, yeah, it's it, it just makes it easy to catch it like that. Where you're like, what the hell? There's a health bar right there. Like it's just sitting there. Okay. Like it's happening to you again. Uh, so, let me see what how you did it that time. Okay, so I th I think I know what you're doing, maybe. And I think what you might be doing is I think what a way you're trying to set up your mineral stacking is you tell your guy to go to a patch. And then as soon as he has minerals in his hand, I think you're telling the SCV to click. Uh, hey, go turn it into the command center with like a right click. Because two times, have I, I, mean, I don't know if it's something that's intentional or if it's a misclick. But if you select the SCV and you tell it to right click the command center, if it, does have noth if it has nothing in its hands, it's going to just sit on the command center like that. But you fix it pretty fast after, again, on this one. It only took you, like, five seconds I saw. Or, like, I mean, it's a little bit of time here. And then you fix it. And then it goes back. And you're stacking the patch again. So the way you stacked it that time was perfect. But never, ever, ever, even ever right-click the command center for any reason ever. Because the uh, simple thing you can do is if the, command, if the SCV does not have minerals in its hand or gas in its hand, it will not have a return cargo button in the bottom right of the command card where it... Um, like down where it says like down here where like move stop hold position there'll be a return cargo button if it has resources like this this guy has a return cargo button right there in bottom right because he has resources in his hands right like right here in the middle of the screen uh, so and same with the guy with the gas he'll have like this guy doesn't have gas but this guy does so he has a return cargo button whereas the guy who doesn't doesn't have return cargo so if you ever want to be like SCV turn that in never ever right click the command center always just say return cargo like, even if you right-click it, then it's fine. Oh, it's just never yeah. get in the habit of ever right-clicking the command center, because if you have an SCV that does that shit, where it Four sits months. there, you definitely don't want Thanks that to Thanks for uh, the content, you, you don't want that to Yeah, I actually, I wasn't Smile. intending to do that. I no, don't know sure. what I was doing. Just, um, yeah, but, no. Uh, yeah. I, I just, oh, sorry, I was just making sure you, uh, you knew the difference. Just to, just to make sure, in case there's, like, a habit there that starts developing. But I got you. Um... Okay, so, uh, that was fine, right there. Uh, okay, the one thing I don't like, though, is this. This, I'm not a fan of. And then the reason why is because this right here is actually a reason why your build's going to be slower, the Reaper. Uh, so here's, what, here's why. A Reaper is actually relative, relatively expensive on your gas. You're already not doing beta gym build. If you're going for a beta gym build, this is completely deviated now. This is a beta GM build that's designed probably more for like Diamond League. And the reason why is because this Reaper, if it doesn't attack immediately and it doesn't scout constantly, it's a waste of its potential. And if it's not abusing its potential, you'd be better off just getting like a faster factory. 
and getting like a tank up set up and marines being made out of the racks if because uh, you're, you're talking about drops as well so i know you're doing the bio style of vita gym not the mech style uh and you, like for instance this are like, right now automatically if you ever play a game and you go shit like how am i how do i how do i not die to this all in that kills me like zerg just pushes me with roaches and i just die i don't understand or like mass slings hit me and i just die this is probably one of the reasons why i die because this is slowing down your tech version of your tech part of your build like crazy because you're mining with one gas which is good i'm glad you're only mining with one gas but you just spent half of what a factory costs on making a reaper and that's going to slow your factory down a fucking ton now so you're going to have a really late tank now because of this and if this reaper spawns and sits there not worth it and i imagine it's going to because i do not want you multitasking at all because it's going to make you not macro like right here you're building a command center right there was a drone poking you and like, like you said before you're like when someone harasses me dude it just falls apart <laughs> It, it, right now, uh, I'm freaking out. That drone really scared me. So, like, <laughs> yeah, uh, you're like, our forces are under attack. <laughs> I, I've, no. I've sent down two SCVs. They're defending each other in case another drone turns up. I'm ready. Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah. <laughs> so here's another here's another tip. Okay, this is a this is another one that's like a uh, like a kind of like a minor detail, but it'll make things way easier. So a Reaper has a very long build time. It's got a 32 second build time. A Marine only has an 18. So you could actually get a Marine out 14 seconds faster than a Reaper. And then, it would also, like I said before, it would also give you the factory faster and stuff like that, which is all great. But if a Marine popped out, you do, you do not need to scout with a Marine. And the Marine could be like, I'm chilling here. And if a drone shows up, I'll kill it off the SUV. So 100% opening Marine is better defensively anyways for faster things like dealing with a worker that's in your base. Uh, it, the league we're talking about. So the information I just said there, for anyone else who's watching this that's like, I'm a Masters player. Reaper's better for Masters players. When you can micro and multitask, Reaper's always better. But when we're talking about setting up basic macro, like the, the foundations of macro, definitely want to make a Marine, I would say. Uh, and then, you, you you know, like, SCV getting attacked by a drone is definitely annoying. Pulling it back, or that, that would be fine. You'd be like, hey, SCV, come back for just a second. Marine, come out, push the drone away, and now Marine, just sit there. And I'll build a command center. I'm fine, and that would have been totally fine, because what's happening now is like two drones or two SCVs for you are kind of chilling at the natural, and it's it's definitely they're they're having a little bit of a powwow. <laughs> and at the same I, time, I, right now I'm actually fully trying to build that command. No, center. No, I I, I know you are. I know so, you are uh, <laughs> for sure. But yeah, no, I, I get it. I get it. I, the the drone. So so I what? Yeah, I, I think it, I think it would simplify the other part of my build. I, I agree. I I do send the Reaper across the map. I think in this one and. I think what I need to do is I need to swap it to a drone scout at 16 or 17 or something. Yeah, you should just SCV scout. And so what a great time SCV yeah. scout would be like if you're if you're building a barracks, you could be like, all right, SCV that builds the barracks, grab him even while he's building racks, and go like this, right, like right click, hold shift, and then like right click, and you could be like, so the SCV would be like, as soon as I'm done building this racks, I'm gonna go check out that natural and then come right back and might start mining this natural because you click the patch here. Because if you don't click a patch okay. here and you just go like right click and that's it, the rest of you will be like, I'm going to mine that and come home and turn it in and then go all the way back down and mine it again and come back home and turn it in again. And then he'll just die. Um, so this is why I'm, I'm harping on this so much. Okay. There's two reasons. Number one, the amount of money it costs to make a command center. And that is 400. So you're super fucking late on the command center. And then the second reason why I'm harping on this so much is because you're, you're messing around with this more than you need to be. And... You're not making SCVs again. So this is pretty massive in terms of, again, stunting your overall growth of your build. It's probably like 30, 45 seconds off max out right there if I just fix those things. Right? Oh, no, for sure. 100%, yes. It's Because uh, yeah. think about it like this. Remember what I said about how like the space is going to probably be like 40, 45 of your SCVs, and the space will be like probably like 20%, 20 to 30% or some shit? Every SCV that you're going to make at this space now is delayed because the command center was delayed. So... Your command centers have stopped being produced here for, I would say, in total, uh, throughout the entire first two minutes of this game. These SCVs were not being produced for probably like 10 to 15 seconds of that overall. Uh, not, It's not great. It's not the worst ever, but it's, uh, it's definitely damaging to you. But then this base was probably delayed for also about 15 seconds uh, from where it should have been started. So... This is like, and, that, and that's pretty rare for me. But yeah, it, I, I, I with a marine, I wouldn't have. Had, I would, I would double exactly. drone faster. Exactly. Yeah. And then here's the thing. Remember what I talk about with like the production of buildings. 
Let's just for a sec. 204. Your Reaper's gonna pop out. Let's see how long it takes for the barracks to be used again. The Grim Reaper has arrived. This is what kills everybody. And right now you're you're doing some micro moves with the Reaper. So you made a Marine again at 215. So you missed 11 seconds of uptime on the racks. Right, and 11 right, seconds right, right, right. is more than half of a Marine. Like that's like you could already have a Marine that's like almost like like 60% of the way done right now. And if you do this multiple times on yourself, is there, like any anybody shows up with anything and you're like, "Wait, holy shit, I don't have enough units and I'm just going to die." So it, it, this is this is the the common denominator problem everybody has. This is this is why I always I've I've said to everybody in like Neil, if you go back and watch more Be the GM, you'll hear me say this like a thousand times. Don't do not micro until Diamond League, and do not do things that require you to micro until Diamond League. Do as little as possible, because the more you try to micro when you're not ready for it, the more things like that I just said keep happening to you, and then you're like, why? Okay, so I'm using my units, but I don't have any fucking units. <laughs> like it ha this has there, and the reason why is not because I'm like, all these players are just bad or some bullshit like that. It's because this needs to become muscle memory. You need to focus on this so much. And you need to get to a, like, you can, you can get to a certain level of gameplay, which I think is getting to Diamond League in this game, to where this is so automated for you that you don't have to think about making a Marine while moving a Reaper. You just do it. You don't have to think about making an SCV while you move the Reaper. You just do it because it's muscle memory. It's not actually a conscious thought. It's a subconscious action you're doing because you've done it so many times. It's like dribbling a basketball. Like, if you watch, if you tell someone to, like, go slam dunk a basketball in basketball, and they've never dribbled before. They're, it's gonna like bounce off their foot. They're gonna dribble really high and not catch. It's gonna go all over the place. But then if you tell someone who's been playing basketball for ten years, go dunk that basketball. He's not even gonna think about dribbling. It's just gonna be fucking something he does. Like, oh yeah, it's just normal for me. I don't even use my brain here. I just like, I'm thinking about dunking because my brain, my body just dribbles the ball for me. Same shit. It's like in everything does, and that's a thing. So, that's exactly what I'm talking about when I talk about. Increasing your APM in StarCraft. That's like dribbling a basketball for that is like the equivalent to APM in StarCraft. It's just like something that's just like gonna you're gonna get better at, like the basic foundation of the game. And that will increase the more your automated reflexes just do shit for you and the more you understand about what you're doing overall. Cause as soon as I'm telling you like in the stuff like this too, right here, I would say, gotta be really careful about over queuing. Uh, two SCVs in a queue, I, I love it. Three is, it doesn't sound like it's that much, but here's why I'm not the biggest fan of this. If you queue up three, and then you don't look at this again for like the next 45 seconds. Like, here's what I'm about to say. This is what I feel like is about to happen, okay? Based off tendencies that I've already seen. Your Reaper is going to go scout. These three SCVs in the command center are going to just get made. And you are going to let the command center go idle again before making a fourth. Because what I think you're doing is you're not putting enough attention in a, in a consistent pattern on macro, and it's kind of spiky up and down. And as soon as you distract yourself, you're not going to macro anymore. So it needs to be a consistent, like, flowing process, and not something you do every once in a while, essentially. So as we go forward, we'll, we'll see how it goes. And, like, this SV is this coming back perfect. He's just finished the depot. Great job. Uh... But yeah, we'll see how it goes. So I'll keep an eye on your Reaper, and I'll watch your SCVs. SCV so you did make another one before this started. Reaper is going into the base. Let's watch your camera for a second. Okay, so now you're microing. Watch the SCVs. Also, it is actually, here's another one. Watch the barracks as well. We'll go right back to when it started, because that's another huge one. Again, uptime of buildings, right? You got to be doing both. You got to be like, barracks, command center, barracks, command center. So it gets fucking overwhelming, for sure. Let's watch your, your camera as you go in. And your Rax is going to go idle here at 234. And then your SCVs are still going, which is nice. Because you queued up a bunch. Rax has been idle since 234, remember that. Here, your mic on the Reaper. This is brutal to watch. No, for sure. Oh, dude, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm fucking impressed yeah. that you actually did that. I'm not, I'm not even kidding. I'm like, wow, well, fucking you made a reactor while you're fucking moving your Reaper to the third base? That is like, you did a little bit of, like, there was, it wasn't perfect, okay? Like, you definitely missed some time there. It was 234 oh, yeah. to uh, 246. So you missed 12 seconds of production on the racks, again, which is, you have, in the first three minutes of the game, you have basically one Marine and one Reaper. That's not great for you right now. But overall, the fact that you actually microed something, tried to micro something, and then you also built something at your base. 
I'm fucking impressed because most people at Gold League would just stare at this for the next 25 seconds and do nothing else and just be like, I'm microing against lings and that's what's happening right now. I'm tunnel visioning like crazy. So I'm fucking impressed that you did that, but definitely I would say you're not ready for it ent entirely yet, but not nearly as damaging to you as I thought it was going to be. So honestly, I give you a well done for gold standards. Honestly, that was way, that was way, way better than I thought. And now your Reaper's going to die. So that that's something that like, it needs to be babysat. Like the, the Reaper is very fucking fragile. If you don't look at it for half a second and he's dying, he's fucking dead. So you have to, like, he's so good if you micro him, but he can be so garbage if you don't. And then, at, with the amount of effort you need to put into a Reaper, you really need to, say at the same time, manage your pace. And it's, it's fucking hard to do that. It's not easy. And it takes a lot of, uh, it, it just takes a, a higher level of, com of comfort with the race to be able to handle it, I would say, overall. So, that's, uh, generally speaking, if we were to justify the Reaper or not here... What did your Reaper really see? You saw four Lings that have no speed yet, which is very normal at this point in the game. And you saw no third at this third location, and you saw the Edge of Creep, so you confirmed he has a natural. So, I would say, you definitely didn't see much. You just, this is, this could be anything. And uh, nothing that the SCV scout couldn't have seen exactly, for much uh, cheaper. 100% exactly. Like Because the Reaper costs 50 gas, which delays your factory, but also, it cost me that... Reactor time, SCV production time. Exactly. So the total cost of the Reaper was so high. It, yeah. It's, it, the, the other replay I said, you mean, by the way, it's funny. The Reaper jumps down the cliff and he's building a command center to do, a, I guess, a planetary fortress rush, which I wouldn't have seen with a Marine. But but, but anyway, yeah. Well, like uh, down here I, or I something? Agree. I agree. Yeah. I've, so I hadn't seen that one before. If, if that happened but, to you, if that it did actually, actually happen to you in a real game, if you had faster tanks, you could easily destroy that. Like, yeah. yeah. I, I think that I think that's that's... That's the, that's definitely the solution. That's the other replay I sent you, by the way. Sure. Um, no worries. Uh, yeah. But it, I'll, I'll marine first, and then focus on the macro. Get the buildings 100% utilized. And I can see that when I watch my replays. I just go back and just stare at the main command center and say, "Hey, you know, where where am I missing these?" Yeah. Uh, and you think you think one one queue, not 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 three in the queue. No. So what, what I want you to do. This is what I want you to do. I want you to queue up one by one. Like, try to do it as perfect as you can to be like, like this is probably the best way to explain this, but, we're, but it's like literally what you need to be doing. You need to be doing your tech path priority of like your building's priority first, okay? And like, so when the game starts, you make an SCV immediately out of your, out of your command center. You can rally the command center to like where the depot wants to go. And then as soon as it spawns, you have another SCV queued up into it and you rally it back to the command center. And now you make your depot. And you need to understand that a depot, what, like, what it costs. Because this makes you understand so much more about what you're doing. And a depot costs 100 minerals. And then what I need you to do from that point on is forever, for now, like or for, from then on, you need to try to maintain an SCV in queue one at a time, but don't do it at the cost of a building. So, because you don't, you don't, you, you will, if you do it perfectly, you don't actually have to cut SCVs and you don't have to delay buildings. So if you understand the tech path and you understand how much shit costs, you don't have nothing gets delayed. So the the idea would be, if your depot is about to be done, you definitely need to make sure if your SCV is also about to be done, you need to queue up another one before it goes idle, so it doesn't go idle at all. And then you make your X, and then while the SCV is in queue, and like another one is now being pumped here, you make your gas. So like a correct way to do that would be like for, here's an example, okay? So a Rax and a gas cost 150 for the Rax, 75 for the gas, and let's just say you have. 250 minerals, okay? So 150 plus 75 is going to be 225, and you have 250 in total. And right now you have an SCV that's like six seconds of the way done. So, and an SCV costs 50. So the last thing I'd want you to do there is go, okay, let's make a SCV again, and then I'm going to make my, uh, my racks, and now I have an SCV that's six seconds from being done, and another one queued behind it, and now I have to wait for 25 minerals to make my gas. It is, it's, okay. it's inefficient, yeah, if yeah. you understand what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, So it, it, you're tying up your... your yeah, exactly. Try, try, like, try to only make sure you don't miss production time, but don't do it at the cost of making buildings wait to be built. Uh, and then it makes it really easy to do this if you understand how much shit costs, like I said before. And then uh, this concept ends, okay? So this only lasts for the first about two and a half minutes of the game. Of, of like doing one queue at a time and trying to perfectly do it. 
and it will it'll like once you like it, like do it many 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 times it'll start feeling like fucking second nature to you and you just do it it feels good it's like a build order for the first start of the game and then from that point on once you have your natural done money is a lot more freed up and a lot more free to use because you have more of it you have double mules you have more SCVs mining a lot more at once your income like instead of having only like 700 800 900 income uh you know your mules now once the mule pops in like you can see he like the zerg has about 900 and you have 1100 and the reason why you have way more than he does is because of this fucking mule once mules start becoming a factor and once other bases start coming online and you start making more money the concept now turns into you have multiple command centers like this and the, the idea is is you're not really like watching the scvs like a hawk like okay what's the production all right start another one right at the end but instead you're like okay try to keep two white boxes all the time so you check it repeatedly and go okay we're at two we're good and then you go do other stuff check it again we're at two we're good do other stuff again check it again we're at one make an scv per every command center that i have to make sure we're always at two that way i have a queued up scv ready to go after the first one because the last thing you want to do is every like second be like you need to check you check you check you uh, check you. Okay, check you. Check you. Check you. Like you don't need to check every. Like, okay, this one needs to be nurtured. That's five seconds out. This is three seconds out. Like it's fucking confusing as shit, and it's not needed. It's such a waste of time, if that makes sense. So, but it does need to be that way when you're on one command center because you got nothing else going on. Got it. Yeah, on top. Yeah. Okay. So that yeah, that's just how that would go for you, I ideally. All right, yeah, that that racks, man. Definitely screwing you like crazy here. Uh, I know we, the Reaper thing, we just talked about it, but yeah. That's definitely a yeah. massive uh, loss there for you. In terms of your production. Like, you know, same thing with the factory. Factory finished at 253. And then, uh, this is a lot of time. Like, there we go. It was like 10 seconds after the factory was done to make a tech lab. So, just the pacing of your buildings needs to be a lot faster, for sure. And then here we go again let's see the commencer there that wasn't that bad wasn't that bad now another tip i would say is not only should you be uh at this point now like i said about to you before uh, now it's going to become the two scv thing but now something you should look at more instead of looking at the actual production of the scv on top of the command center your eyeballs shouldn't look at that as much now you're at, for that reason now like i said it goes down to the bottom of the screen but you still should look at the command center periodically for the number above it and make sure you're not inoptimally mining like you know your bases so what would need to happen right now is a simple you take all your command both your command centers and go okay let's re-rally to my natural so new scvs are going to go to my natural and let's fix my mineral line to my gas ratio here and grab two to drop it down to 16 to make it perfect and put them on my gas so if you do the yeah, longer yeah. the longer it takes you to do I that think, i think yeah. i uh i think I, yeah, I think I fix it in a second. Sure. Uh, but I, yeah, it, it's, it's all about getting it on, on time. Then. No, for sure. Like, it, if you fix it before yeah. it goes to 19, like, so you fix the minute, like, I'll, I'll give you, because I'll say this. If it went to 19, that's not great. If it went to 20, that's even worse, and then so on and so on and so on. So I'm proud of you for fixing it before you actually went above what you needed to be here. Because this is essentially perfect saturation. It's just not put on the right places. Because you have the right amount of SCVs here. So that is gr a fucking great job that you already fixed that before it became a problem. But definitely if you if you take a super long time to fix this, it's again going to fuck over now your medevac and your tank timings. And your upgrades. Like all things that cost gas. Our SCVs yeah, and if, yeah, and then if, yeah, if you have more marines here too, this would just you know be no problem here. <laughs> Sorry, I just gotta. I want to watch this one more time because I thought this was funny. <laughs> Hold on, it's the the, uh, the the. I think I think Zerg. If if I if I was watching tendencies of you or you as a player, I'd say Zerg scares you. <laughs> the reason why. Oh man, how oh, old? Oh, like like. It's zergling. It's a slow zergling at three minutes thirty, no. and it does damage. Well, like it's because yeah. your initial movement on the bridge is to run what away. Imagine the normal does to me. No. Like, <laughs> no, it's just like this. He's like, I'm building a building, and then he dies, and the marine goes, "I'm getting the fuck out of here for like one second. He's like, "Fuck this shit, I'm out." <laughs> he like runs <laughs> away, <laughs> and then he comes back, and you're like, "Oh no, 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 we're good, we're good, we're good." <laughs> we had to have a quick morale check. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's funny. Oh, now he's dead, though. He overextended, right? But he's only one guy. So uh, if you had more Marines, obviously he wouldn't die. <clears throat> I 
Okay. And then I like I like the placement of your first tank. High ground tank, definitely what you want to be doing. Uh, but I can clearly see why you're falling. Look, like, now, check this out again, right? So it, it always happens with everything. It always happens with everything. We talked about the racks. Oh, we talked about the command yeah. center. Now you get another addition, and now you got the factory as well. So this stuff is it, it bites you in the ass so much more than a lot of people realize. And we'll just watch the fact. Just this is the first instance of the factory. Tank pops out at 402. How long do we wait? You do, you do have enough money to make another tank right now, by the way, because the tank is 150 uh, 125. So right now you have 235 and 205. So you, and you have enough supply as well because it's only three supply. So a tank could be started, but 403 is when it popped where, where out. Where am I looking? Where am I looking? Sorry, at the production, oh, the production okay, of the factory. Yeah. It is. So yeah, yeah okay. it, it, it took it, it wasn't that bad. Again, actually wasn't that bad. Could be a little bit better, but it wasn't that bad. So uh, it was five seconds off. So but like the only re like the the way it goes, I guess is. I can see why, like, you're getting into plat and stuff like that. Like, it's it's definitely, you're not microing, like, absolute the worst I've ever seen or anything that's, I'm not trying to make it sound, like, super, super negative. But there, if it's, like, five seconds here, six seconds there, eight seconds here, four seconds there, ten seconds here, seven seconds here, it adds up so much between all of them. And if we were to add up up to this point of, like, okay, miss time on racks, miss time on command centers, miss time on factory so far, you might be actually at a total of, like, Literally, it sounds weird because it'll, it'll be high and you, it might not make sense. But if we're like, again, if we're isolating each one of these and we're adding all of them together, the, the timing of what you've missed on every building combined probably at this point would be like almost two minutes. Wow. Yeah. So I guess one thing I could do is I could just, you know, since there's scary Zerg on this map, maybe I could go against easy AI, pick like the first five minutes and just, just getting that. To, and then, of course, you know, I'm going to have to deal with people coming in. But. Mm -hmm. what, what would be a good target at maybe four minutes is right because there's so much i've already messed up so i, I really believe in, in, in intentional practice yeah and no, like getting I, I have an idea so, i have an idea for you that i think where i know you're yeah. going with this i think when this is over i'll literally go into a game right for you and i'll give you the replay and i'll give you an exact quota you should be hitting like i'll literally be like this okay. is a five minute mark hit this and if you don't go back and try again and it does and yeah. i will also give you placement of units and like because the thing is is this is actually like it's, it's it seems weird but this is really how it is okay if you get attacked by something you should genuinely not even try to defend it in terms of like micro in any way you should just go okay whatever i have a move that area if it's if it's there and just literally don't even don't even look at it just be like i believe in like, I, I want you to so believe in your macro so fucking much that you think you'll be fine if you don't watch the fight because if you do watch the fight you won't fucking macro and you'll be like okay we really need to make sure we're fine through micro when you will always be fine through macro it's like i needed to take the yeah. the, the the leap of faith here <laughs> the macro leap. no of I, faith. I i i believe it I no see for it sure happening. for sure like I, i've just gotten 200 mmr you know back as my macro got cleaned up a little bit more okay this is and in fact i'd like you to see the other replay in a second too because i did sure. a better job at the beginning of it but yeah i i i, I, totally I can fine. tidy this up which is good it's nice to have low-hanging fruit to fix yeah now I'm, I'm gonna give you an idea here okay check this out so we're gonna write down some numbers really fast. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna pause it right at five minutes, okay? And I, this is gonna be the quote I'm gonna give you. So at five minutes for you, you are at 62 out of 78 total supply, and that represents 38 SCVs uh, as part of that. And then the rest of that is obviously army supply, and that army supply entails that you have. You, we'll talk about units that are only out right now, not units in production, because production should always be happening, but units that are out. Because if you get attacked, if, if you were to be attacked by like a five minute all in, you're not going to be like, well, the units that are in production will help me. They might help you later, but what will help? What is there now will help you now. So right now you have two tanks and you have 10 Marines and that's it. So at 38, 62 supply at a 78. So we know your total production value. And then you have 38 SCVs with two tank, 10 Marine. And then. I'll give you the benchmark that I'll, I'll do for you in a minute here, and we'll see what I'm at at five minutes, and that'll be, that could be your new quota to aim for. Uh, and then I'll, here's something relevant, too, is we'll talk about your tech path. We'll say Starport is at 963 out of 1300 HP in production. So, or you, or you can say also at the same time, you can say but that also equals 25 out of 36 uh, seconds. And then that's what you have so far. Uh, and no third CC. Like, uh, that's something irrelevant. That's relevant too. No third CC. 
So we'll come back to that. When, when, when should the third CC be going down? As on as, so as soon as you can afford it, and I would say before you take your gases here. This is really early on the gases at your natural, and because the reason why, the reason why is your build is actually mineral heavy as crap. Like, what you're, you're doing a build? Sorry, whoops. You're doing a build that is a. Uh, you're trying to expand. You're trying to take more bases. You're trying to go for a marine heavy composition. And you're, that means you're exploding supply like crazy fast because you're making a lot of SCVs, you're making a lot of Marines, you're making command centers. All these things cost a shitload of minerals. The only thing you're doing with your gas is you're making uh, your tanks, and you're not even going to make tanks consistently the entire time. You're just making an initial set of them, like three or four tanks. We'll just say four tanks to keep it super simple and super safe. So four tanks. And then after that, tanks are done. You're, do you're like, no, like not even using the factory anymore. You're just like, yeah, cool, I'm done on tanks now. Because if I get base traded or all in or something, tanks are going to help a lot. And then it's just medevacs only. Medevacs and then upgrades. So your gas is not actually super high priority expenses. It's, it's actually pretty minimal on the grand scheme of things. But your mineral expenses are astronomical. They're super high. So you definitely want to make sure you're not taking your gas before you have a nice mineral line. Because you took your gas at these get two gases probably at like eight SCVs on the mineral line or something like that. And then also, if you were to want to saturate them properly, you drop your SCV count again way below 16. So you're undervaluing your minerals and you're overvaluing your gas for a build that is reliant on mostly minerals. Yeah, and right there, you saturate the gas, and now you're back to no, down to 11 SCVs, now 12. Like it's it's just under saturation hurts you like crazy, as well, and it makes it to where you like you can't afford shit properly. Um, and then same thing here again, right? No production for sure. And now, I mean, this is this is by far more important than anything else we're going to talk about the entire day or the entire lesson, because this, you you could be the worst. I'm, I'm telling you right now, this is so real. You could be god awful, aw, like just terrible at Starcraft and go, ah, uh, a move main base. I don't I don't know. We'll see what happens. If you did that though, off of like a the fastest max supply you could do, chances are you're going to win the game like 80 percent or like 90 percent of the time. It, like, you don't micro anything. You don't even stim pack. You don't even do anything with your army. You probably will win a lot of the time in Gold League if you just have good, flawless macro, or as close to that as you can get. So everything else, I know a lot of people love to focus on everything, but everything else, when you're not doing this perfectly, makes this even worse. So that is a real thing, because it, it, distractions make... If this is already a, a problem... It means that this needs to be fixed before distractions start becoming a thing as well for you, uh, like by yeah, far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'll still, I'm still going to talk about it with you. Obviously, I'm not going to just not talk about it. It's just I want you to really understand that uh, everyone who's in this situation needs to like really respect it as much as they can. All right. And then a, a, t a quick tip here: whenever you make a, this is okay if this is a planetary. But you should always try to aim for three orbitals, I would say. Three orbitals is a really, really, really nice initiation of your economy. Uh, and the reason why I would say this is a problem is because if this was an orbital, you should make it an orbital before you float it over to your third base. And the big reason why that is the fact, or why, why that's the case, is because an orbital generating energy for mules is more value than and it producing an SCV. Like, at the mineral line or something. <laughs> Yeah, it, I, this was a response to the fact that I'm oversaturating my natural. So I thought I'll move it over, move stuff over, uh, start mining, and then morph it there. For sure. Um, and that, rather make, but yeah, I get, but it was, I, yeah, it, that was more of a response. No, to for sure, a, for sure. It's so it's totally fine. I, I, I get your I get your logic there. It's it makes sense. But that you, like so that's something that it, it creates another problem for you where you got to think about it and go, well, why am I super oversaturated here? Maybe my third commander is extremely late. Right, right, right. It should just be earlier and then morphed. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, because mules are by far your biggest source of income for Terran. And that's also another a quick tip here, too. Just like I said before, maintenance of your base, right? Maintenance of your energy of your command center needs to be a thing now, too. So you definitely need to make sure you're not stockpiling. Like, uh, this is currently five, about to be six mules on your bases. And then when this is done, it's, it'll be seven when this turns into orbital, too. That's a lot of income that you're missing out on. And you, you want to try to make mules, like, ASAP. When you have the energy, drop that shit on your mineral line. It makes the build flow even better as well. It makes things like the hiccup of your racks and stuff way easier to control. Okay, so if something like this happens, I want to. I'm gonna quiz you right now. What is your immediate? So I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna actually do this. I'm gonna go right to when it happens. 
if you were in the game right now and uh, speed up just a second and get back to the meter right when it hits your base right about now you'll say you're like oh pause it right here again what is your immediate reaction what, what are you gonna do in the game right now with this uh, so I'm gonna select a long army and a move the area and I'm gonna make some turrets okay how many turrets I will. I'll probably make. Uh, I'll probably make two per mineral line, and I probably should make one. But I find my control is so bad that I'm losing to mute it. So uh, okay. I guess I'm not. I, I know I should make one, but I'm. Yeah, I'm making two right now. So here's what I. This is a good way, that you can make your life way easier. Okay. Now, watch this or uh, listen to this. You have a lot of marines here, and that's great. I fucking love that. You want a lot of marines. That's super nice. I would say. If you realize your opponent is this kind of a guy who's like, oh my god, he's got fucking mutas. This is what you should do 100%. Take. Okay, so I'm going to... If I was playing the game and I was trying to do it in a, like a B2GM format where I'm like, okay, this is very approachable. This is what I would do. I would go six SCV, SCV, SCV. Make sure all the SCVs are pumping. We want to make sure we're not going to stop. We're not, we're not going to go idle here, okay? That only takes a quick second. I just want to make sure if we're gonna if we're gonna lose SCVs, we're not gonna fucking miss them as well by producing them. Immediately after that, I would go select army, just like you said. A move the area. I would then go like this. Look at my blob wherever it is. Green box a chunk of it. Right click it right there. Yeah. Green box a chunk of it. Yeah. I right click it right there. <laughs> Uh, it's like you played this game before. Yeah. Just <laughs> you know exactly what's about to happen. Don't don't even try to chase the mutas how, uh, how many what's the muta to marine ratio i need if you like, have if you have if, two, if you have two marines if you have two marines facing one muta you'll kill it and if you have one marine fighting one muta with a medevac you'd kill it oh wow really yes okay. it's actually mutas are actually fucking terrible against marine medevac so so in my case i just i can i can easily defend three mineral lines with the marines i have yeah 100 percent. if you have 30 marines versus seven meter 100 you could do 10 10 10 and you would fucking destroy seven meters mm. especially since you also have a weapon upgrade that's finishing in the next four seconds as well that makes it even better and and no turrets until i want, want you to move turrets, out later, turrets so it's tur you do make turrets but the, the that's the thing is a lot of gold players here would go fuck i need turrets <laughs> and you do I'm not lying. You, you do need turrets, but it's not the first thing you want to do. Because if you just go, all right, let's have open mineral lines and let's start making turrets. The mutas are going to fly there and they're going to kill the SCV making the turret. And these are going to kill more SCVs. And you're like, oh, shit. My turret didn't go up in time. Because the turret takes like 20 fucking one seconds or some shit to make. It takes 18 seconds to make. So that's a lot of time that it's going to be not having a defense while the SCV is trying to build it and it'll just die. So if you, if you first go, well, what do I do have already? Marines can just run to mineral lines and sit in the mineral line, and now mutas can't engage the mineral line anymore, and then I can make a turret and not lose SCVs. So the priority yeah. should be, number one, maintain production, because you're losing a little bit of shit right now, maintain it. Number two, A, move your Marines to a mineral line, and then number three, split them apart and go, you guys stand there, some of you guys stand up here, and you could even be like this. Barracks that are all rallied like right here, or you could rally all your, like, and if they do rally right here, you can go, you know what? My next round of Marines, you guys reinforce that base. Next round of Marines, you guys reinforce that base. Next round of Marines, you guys reinforce that base. Whatever you want to, or you could be like this. You two racks, rally there. You racks, rally there. You two racks, rally there. And just fuck, keep making Marines. You can 100% spread your boys out around your base in a moment like this. And then not even think about it anymore. And just go back to continuing macro. Like, and it'll be like, we're under attack. We're under attack. We're under attack, and you're just like, yeah, I don't give a shit, though, because I'm just over here making Marines, making my upgrade, making my SCVs, making it to the command center, because every time we're under attack, his meters are going like this. <laughs> they just keep running into Marines and dying, and the Zerg, on the other hand, is like, probably not going to inject while he does this. He's probably not going to creep spread while he does this. He's probably not going to spend his money while he does this. So he's going to... It's the exact same thing that I would have told you. Don't make a Reaper. It makes you play slower because it fucks your multitasking up and it makes you not macro. I would definitely tell a gold player, do not fucking make mutas 
and try to harass with Mitos because if he just macros, you're going to fall so far behind. So it's the same shit. And if you just macro, whoever just macros is going to win. So think about how can I set my base up in a way that is easy as fuck and just macro, which would be sp just spread your army around your base. If he's going to play super harass oriented, spread your units out defensively. Just let him sit all over the place. You Got can, it. Yeah. 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 I, 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 yeah, in that way I won't panic. Yeah, because like two turrets, massive overreaction. This is now 600 minerals. So like if you think about it, like if you're going to go two turret, two turret, two turret, that's 600 minerals you're investing into turrets right now. And then also... I mean, at least. <laughs> what, yeah. I'm going to build more. Yeah. I'm now nervous. Yeah, what, exactly. What it's it's yeah. not something that's scary. Marines fucking destroy me. It's like crazy. Uh, it's, higher supply in StarCraft 2 always beats less supply in general. That's just the general theme of yeah, this game. Yeah, yeah. So, and turrets don't give you supply. They just, they make you not make supply because you make so much money invested in turrets, right? So now let's watch. So your, in this, or go ahead, sorry. You go sorry, ahead. go ahead. I was going to say, in this in this position here, um, before I overact with turrets, uh -huh. who's ahead right now? You are. I mean, you are. 100% you are. And I've, got, and I've got better. Okay. All right. The, the, here's why you're ahead. In, this is why you're ahead in the game overall. Zerg does not want to be establishing themselves as fast as you establish yourself. And that comes from economy. And right now, you guys have 61 drones to 56 SCVs, and this is after you just lost five. So you guys were actually tied in workers, because Mita just killed five SCVs at your natural. So, or like, killed like four, because one Zergling killed one SCV earlier. So you're basically tied, though, is the point I'm trying to make here. But here's the real thing. If you drop mules, which, you, I mean, unfortunately, you haven't for a long time. But if you drop mules, that income would not be tied if you guys are tied in, in harvesters. It would say, oh, we both have about 60, but the Terran has like 3,800 income and the Zerg has 2,400 because mules are insane. They are, they overlap. They don't even take turns mining with SCVs. They're literally like the big brother worker that just like, it's like that scene in Ghost where they build pottery together. They do it at the same time. <laughs> the, the mule just fucking mines over the hands of the SCV and they get minerals at the same exact time. So you get ass loads of income through having mules and you, if you drop it down properly, it's so effective. It's super good. And Zerg should feel scared if they're letting you have the same economy as them with Harvester Count. Zerg should, in the, because the power of Zerg is, they can make more shit faster at a, at a faster pace because of Larva Inject. So he needs to have a, like, 80, 80, like 80 drones right now to your 56 SCVs for that to be appropriate for Zerg. So absolutely, you are ahead right now if you just maintain production. Okay. Now, let's take a moment here and let's watch, not even your command centers at this point, let's just watch your production. What, like So we don't have to look at the middle screen. I want you to look at the bottom middle of the screen here. Look at like the, the racks in the factory in the starport, little boxes in the buildings themselves. And let's see if you maintain production throughout the Muto attack, which this should be your first priority, not your last priority. So right now, all your buildings are idle except for the starport. And now your starport's idle, and now all buildings are idle. And they, a lot of your buildings have been idle. Like some of them just finished recently, but... I'm building turrets for him to kill the SCV Ex before the Exactly, turret. right? <laughs> and now you chase him with everything when one-third of the Marines would have done the job, and now you're going to get hit yeah. here, maybe. And you still haven't produced anything. So, um, yeah. Okay, so if we... So I, I do eventually sort this out and split my Marines up. Okay. Um, and then I have an issue with Banes and stuff. Thanks. But I guess... Well, I, I, in, in, in attacking him, because I, okay. I, I do actually, because I am ahead. I drop so, my, I drop my, uh, my mules. I re SCV, and then I head over there, and then I end up with a problem. Think about this, okay? This is, this is the concept you should think about. Like this is, this doesn't apply just to Zerg, even though this is going to be a very Zerg sounding example, okay? Think about this. Imagine if there's one really big, we're going to use bug. Actually, I just said we're going to use bugs, but yeah. Imagine there's a really big spider, like a tarantula or something. And it th that tarantula is in an ant hill, and that tarantula it fucking it, it's like it's killing ants all over the place. It's it's so far it's killed a hundred ants, and it's working on its next one hundred right now as we speak. But the ant hill feels like it fucking never ends. It has like it feels like a million ants are coming out of that thing. It just literally doesn't end, and they keep swarming the spider, and eventually the ants overpower it and win. That's exactly how you should play StarCraft Two. You're the ant hill. Everyone in StarCraft Two is the ant hill, and anyone that thinks that anyone that thinks that they are the tarantula in StarCraft Two is playing the game wrong, because the tarantula is the guy who makes an army that is like 
all right, I made this thing, and now I'm going to be really strong with it, and that's just what I'm going to do. Like, for instance, Banelings are scary versus Marines. I 100% understand that. It's very real. But if you throw Marine wave after Marine wave after wave after wave after wave after wave of Marines into Banelings... You will overpower him over time if your macro is good enough. Like it's so if you if it takes you a hundred marines or two hundred marines to get through a round of banes, that's totally cool. These guys are digital code. They don't really have real families. Throw as many of them into death as you can. <laughs> it's totally fine. Because if you outproduce your opponent, if either one of you just produced here, you would run the other one over so goddamn hard. I could say the same thing about the, this guy. He definitely is not macroing as well as he could be because this game is super late and you guys both have somewhat low supplies. You guys are both taking too long to get shit done in certain ways. And we, we've, we've obviously we've discussed your problems a lot here, which is totally fine. It's very fixable. But like if, if for instance, if you have a clump of bio, OK, if you have a literal blob of bio and you're like time to move the Zerg and he has a clump of banelings and you get fucking destroyed. Just this make, is gonna happen in about three minutes. No, it's it's cool. I don't mind it. Just make another make another clip of bio. You, you should be able to oh, remax yeah. a new clip of bio immediately. Like it's just you're like, oh, I'm not max anymore, but I'm maxed again. Like as your units die, it's like no max, max, no max, max, no max, max so, again, and that's just how. So it this goes. game build two more command centers, a bunch more production, walk across the map, lose my supply. I then don't. I think what happens, I don't start production immediately i think that's what's that's gonna happen 100%. I, and then i get run over backwards yep. because in you know, turn turn takes too long no for sure I, I believe so it I, so i'm gonna predict that your advice will be don't look at it 100 <laughs> percent. instead just do production yes because i think i think that's what's gonna happen the only thing you um, should do is when so now we're gonna talk about your scouting for instance okay so when you get your when you get a setup like this where you have a blob of marines and you're feeling okay you're like okay well i have sa i have stabilized i'm fine grab a medevac like two specifically, but you're gonna grab one medevac and go left with it, and one mat one medevac and go right with it. Okay, and you can literally hotkey them if you want to or whatever. But all you would do is you would go like green box, right click, right click, like a bunch of marines, green box, and you just right click the medevacs, and then you individually click one medevac and go hold shift the mini on the mini map now. Click this space, and then this space, this space, this space, this space, this space, and then outside the main. And then if you ever cross by a base. Grab that medevac and go, oh, cool, I, I crossed by that base right there. So let's take the medevac that's now coming this way, send it this way, and drop Marines like right there or something. That's fine. Or drop them right there, even. Whatever. And then same thing with the, the other medevac. Let's say this medevac right here got loaded up with eight Marines. Click it and go, all right, hold shift, move command, move command, move command, move command, move command. Oh, wait, and I, like move command. And you go, oh, wait, there's a base right there. And I, my, medevac, my medevac is currently moving like right here. Let's grab it. And go drop like right there, or drop like right here, drop like right there, drop right there, drop wherever the fuck you want to drop. Obviously, if you drop in between mineral patches, it's going to make your marines more effective. But if you're not going to micro it, who gives a shit? Just drop the base. Because if you dropped this base and this base at the same time, because you send the medevacs out at the same time, and you go, I'm pat my medevac made it all the way across the left side around the same time as my medevac made it around the right side, and I got to the locations that I want to go to similar at similar times, because the map, that's just how it's going to go. It's not like the right is way longer than the left. Um, so uh, what would happen is, is a lot of times a player, like just how you dealt with the mutas, where you chase all of them with everything, if he chases all of your marines up here to attack these marines at this location first, and at the same time you have marines dropping here, just because you, you just did two scouts at the same time, these Marines might kill an entire mineral line while he's over here being like, kill the medevac. Oh, wait, what the fuck? I got dropped here, too. And even if that doesn't happen, that's fine, because now what that tells you is I know where Zerg's exterior base is. So now next time I attack, I'm going to A-move my army till right there. And then I'm going to scan forward and stim back in and just let it go to fucking to town and then go back in macro. Yeah. And that's all it would be. And then, again, you're expecting to die. You are absolutely 100% content if that entire army fucking dies. That is, that is, it's a normality. It's actually what should happen. Because it's not gonna die for nothing. You're gonna, ba like, basically, you're gonna, like, rip off the Zerg's fucking arms and legs, and he's gonna be just a, like a potato torso, and you're gonna lose your entire army, but you're gonna make a new army that's gonna finish off the potato. <laughs> like, you're, it's about multiple waves of units. It's not about your first and only wave. That's what it is for every race. No race is single wave, and that's it. 
every race is Remax, Remax, Remax. And this is another thing that most people fuck up because everyone thinks it's about the first max and they're supposed to win the game with that. And that's not how it is. It's about Remaxes. Again, it's about the anthill analogy. 100%. That's so fucking real. It is literally the anthill analogy. Do not be the tarantula. That is the one thing that's it. And it's never. And there's not number two tarantula or number 50 tarantula. But it is about 1, 10, 100, 1,000, 100,000 ants that just swarm the fucking tarantula player. You just literally never stop. And you keep expanding, which gives you money to never stop. Yeah, it's way too many turrets here. For sure. See how fast... It, like, oh, look at that. Just watch that. Do you, the good example. You have 10 Marines fighting 5 Mutas, and these Marines don't even have a medevac. And they've already they've already stimmed and they're already down a little in HP. They're not even being healed or anything like that. But watch how many of these Marines die in the time that five mutas die. And by the way, this is the exact same supply. Ten Marines versus five muta is ten, it's ten supply both ways. So, but this is not even going to be a close fight. They're you melting. yeah, you killed all. Okay, you you would have killed that one if he didn't run away. You killed five mutas with ten Marines. And you lost one marine. It's not even. It, it's fucking insane. Like, so understanding the power of your units is also relevant, obviously. And you making uh, five turrets with another. Th you have eight turrets so far in your base. Definitely an overinvestment. And like, maybe if you had marines standing there, this wouldn't be happening. Yeah, and then you, again, I, I gotta say this one more time because it's super big. Your mules are actually maxed. Like this base is maxed on energy. It's not generating any more energy for mules now. That's a that that is a big fucking problem for you. That is a massive macro problem. You gotta make sure you spend mules way more often. Never want to max on energy ever. The the only time it's a, now I'm just throwing away money. Yeah, the the only time it's ever okay to max on energy. If there is a moment in the game when it does happen. It's when you have like almost no bases left to mine and like you're already having like eight mules on a new expansion that's like well your only base you have mining because like there's like barely any bases left and you're scanning a lot more uh, or something like that and you're not really worried about mule energy because you, you just can't really optimize it because you don't have enough open patches to mule from but in a moment like this you have so many open patches that like each one patch represents that could be a mule 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 this is like 20 mules you could have right now but you have zero and you have access to energy to make probably about like nine of them. So you still can't even touch it. Like in, in, in terms of like all the patches. But you definitely could utilize what you have though for sure. Alright, so. Uh, and like your main base once again is undefended. If the guy came back again to the main, that would be a problem. I like your Marines sitting at the third. Maybe. I love that. That was good. That was good. I love it. Just leave them there now. I fucking love it. If you're gonna take a base and you're not ready to move out yet, that's fucking great. That's great. Good shit. Do that more often. Leave them there. Uh, I would say the only thing I don't like about this, great job though, for real, but the only thing I don't like about this is very minor. Put them more in the mineral line. So they're a little bit on the south side. If you put them more in the center of the mineral line, it, it, it protects your workers a bit better. Because uh, right now, if this, guy, if this guy actually was good at micro and being really fucking annoying, he could bunch up mutas right here and pop the turret and then not get shot by marines. And then you'd be like, Oh god, the turret's dead, and my SUV died, and then he just flies away. But if you had your Marines more in the central of the middle line, you'd punish him no matter what, whatever angle he came from to attack the middle line. So And one turret yeah. per minute when he's when he if he is muted, one turret per middle line is is is, yeah, is acceptable. Hundred percent, yeah. Okay. And, and the only reason why that I would say that that's that's normal is because this is this is real, okay? This is again so a concept that you need to, that everybody needs to understand. The turrets are not supposed to kill the mutas. It's supposed to buy you time so that you can repair it, and marines can kill the mutas. And the only but time the mutas aren't going to sit there killing SEVs while they're getting slaughtered by a turret. So it, it it's like a it's it's yeah, it's, it's, it's more it's, it's like a scarecrow. It's like a deterrent as well. Mm -hmm. Like he might be like, oh, there's a turret there. I don't want to mess with that. But at the same time, the amount of turrets you would actually need to make to actually kill the mutas would be a fucking shitload. Like if they, if this guy has twenty mutas, you would need to make probably like ten fucking turrets to deal with that, or twelve turrets. To deal with that in one little area. This would need to have like a box of turrets. 
to deal with 20 mutas, especially if the mutas have weapon upgrades. But if you had marines, one turret, plus like your next round of bio that's like sitting at a rally point, you could just be like, hey, new rally point, guys. Go fight at that turret right now really fast because mutas are here. That, that we're assuming that that's if you're already in the stage of the game where like you're having like, you're moving on and attacking him and you're no longer spreading yourself out while you're just macroing. When you're macroing, you should just leave marines and mineral lines. And while you're, if the guy shows you, I'm going to harass you with this kind of a style. Just fucking stand in mineral lines until you're ready to move out. And when you're ready to move out, group up and then attack him. Yeah. And then now you're making a lot more production. I love it. Overall. Uh, we'll go to the, a fight in a second here. I just want to kind of look at your base one more time. Like, I don't know what's going on here, but that's... Uh, it's crazy. I think you're trying to repair turrets because the Mutas fought you a second ago or something. But yeah, I would say, yeah, it's just, it's all about the remax and the, the new dudes. And you can always remake SCVs too. So if, if like, you're maxed out and the Zerg attacks you in your base and he kills like eight SCVs or 10 SCVs, it's really easy to replace it then when you have like seven command centers or something. So I'm going to give you one more rule, okay? One more rule of thumb. You should be having an SCV <coughs> that builds a command center. Like, in your base or something. Like, this would be a perfect location because it's wide open. Build a command center. And this SCV that builds a command center should be repeatedly building command centers. Like, when you build that third base and it lifted off, fourth base, lift it off, put a planetary to a fourth base. Fifth base, lift it off. Sixth base, lift it off. Seventh base, eighth base, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, whatever. It, like, never stops making command centers. Basically, until you have, like, five, fifteen command centers. And not all of them have to be at bases. You could have, like, let's say you have eight bases. Three of them are orbitals, and five of them are PFs. And then let's say you have 15 command centers, and you have, but that's only with eight bases. You could have, like, seven more orbitals, like, stretched out along your base somewhere. Like, you just put them somewhere. Like, you basically, what I'm trying to say is, is that 13 and a half minutes, the fact that you only have four command centers is really low. At this time, you should have probably, like, 10 plus command centers. So if you did take a loss like that, instantly replaced. Right, right. Even if I'm, yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, and then also you're you're mining like shit now, because uh, you're mining. You're like not having anything here. Obviously, a lot of SUVs are sitting there by the turrets. But even if you these were here, this would not be fully saturated. This is not fully saturated either. If you actually put the guys back on gas, this base is not fully saturated at all. Not even close. And this base is oversaturated on the middle line, but if you fixed your gas, would also be undersaturated. Your SCV count right now is actually really low. So you would need another like 20 SCVs uh, running, and then you would also need this base running, and you could have another base, and they could be dropping. Also, the, 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 the fact that you have a bunch of patches still like kind of up and running here is kind of crazy because it just shows that you're not muling enough. Like you, need, you would be getting so much more money so much faster if you muled properly and maintained SCVs properly. Yeah, yeah. All right, now going to your fight here. Uh, all you should do, all I, all I, like, so the way you moved here, it's, uh, whatever, it's not a huge deal. You're in the middle of creep. I don't give a shit. You're more than welcome to go scan once and just kill all the creep around you. That's, that's fine. I'm not going to say that's a bad idea. You could, you could definitely wipe out a massive chunk of creep if you scan in the middle of that and then get rid of all these tumors around you. If you want to do that, that's fine. But just make sure when you move out, you're assertive about... Uh, so I, I, the thing I told you earlier was the scout thing, right? So you, you, right now you're moving in the middle of the map and you have no fucking idea where any of the bases are. You're, you're, you're playing a battleship and you have no information right now. You're like, uh, B7. <laughs> you're like, I don't fucking know. <laughs> but there's Zerg out there and there's Exactly, scary, yeah. So, he's on the, he's on uh, that we side gotta of the We got to stay map. together. Yeah. I'm trying to imagine the Marines with, with all in the fog of war, like all back to back, like just waiting for the bailing. Yeah. The, the, we just know the yeah. bailings are coming. It's like, it's like the scene in Jurassic Park when it's tall grass with raptors and you're just like, oh, we're all going to get picked apart here. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no, if you, if you are engaging from the exterior, the outsides, way fucking easier to take better engagements. And you should be doing these engagements with, like I said before, you send like a one drop out around like 150 supply. 150 is a good checkpoint for this because you're going to max okay. out pretty quickly after that. So as soon as the drops are over, you should basically be maxed out. And then you go, and you're like, okay, now we go. Uh, so definitely a bit late here on, uh, on this. And then when you go in, you're going into the heart of Zerg. So the Zerg is coming at you from multiple directions. Uh, like he, actually, not really. He doesn't put anything on the side. He's coming at you from like the back only. But this is fine. I'm not not opposed. I'm not a big. 
I'm not, I'm not, there's no problem with how you're fighting. I don't give a shit how you micro this. You could have walked into Burrowed Banes and I wouldn't give a shit. Like, because the point is, is as soon as your supply starts to drop, your production should be exploding. So, 1322 is when the fight starts, for real. And let's see how long it takes for you to produce units. Yeah, this is, this is going to be super painful. I don't mind that. Oh my god, all oh, my marines died. Ah. So you started making marines at uh, 1330. So a, a bit of time went by. You, you didn't start making units until your last dude basically died. Like you, you have three marines left and you're just now starting to make marines again. You should have been making marines as the shit was going, to, like starting to die. And it, there could have been like marines that are like already halfway in production almost or some shit like that. And you're, uh, you know, and how much production do you have actually right now? You have eight racks and only uh, four of them have a reactor. One is a tech lab. And then uh, three of them are naked. Or no, sorry, you have another reactor there. So you have two of them are naked. This one doesn't count yet because it's not actually done yet. But it's going to finish like right now. Uh, so you're going to have three racks that are just not, not doing shit. And you have 4,000 minerals in the bank. This is a problem for you because this, this shows me that you didn't set up your remax potential fast enough. So you should only have a bank established. This the, the, this is important to know too. The only time you should ever have bank, and bank represents obviously money that you can't spend right now. The only time that that should exist is when you have all of your production ready to go. We're talking about like 20 to 24 production facilities. And you have all of your current upgrades already queued up and you can't do anything right now because you have to wait for that. And you're also maxed out. That's the only time you should start developing real bank. So the fact that you have 4,000 minerals and you only really have like uh, six racks in your main and natural pumping units, that is not even close to being enough right now. You should already have like 20 barracks with a factory and a starport. Like done with reactors on all of them and tech labs and whatever. Like the whole, remember how I, remember how I did in BGM? I was always like, okay, we're, our last like five racks we're going to make are going to be like five tech labs and the rest of them are always reactors except for the first tech lab in the very beginning when we make upgrades off that. Like that's what you, you should already be on that point right now. Like by far. Yeah. And yeah. you should be able to be constantly holding a max while losing that army. Or like it's like within about 15 seconds of that the army dying, you're already maxed out again 15 seconds later. Like it's super fast remax. And then if you were doing that, he just blew his whole army to deal with you. And if you're doing the ant strategy, that exact same army that just died, you attack with it again uh, at 1350. And you're like, okay, let's go again. And what does Zerg have at 1350? If he doesn't, if he doesn't have a, a solid macro, he won't have shit to deal with you by then. Also, my game kind of. He's got a ton of first. money. Has he got larva? If I had that remax, would I take? Would I have been able to take him out? Uh, 100, percent you would have. Uh, like he's got. Like the problem he's having, is he's having 7,000, 8,000 minerals in the bank right now, which means it clearly shows you his macro is not up to par. And I can tell, like, so my, so my game just crashed, unfortunately. Uh, I can't actually look at anything. But <laughs> no, no worries. in bottom right, no injects, nothing over, nothing going on over there. It's just the hatcheries sitting there. And then he's only got four hatcheries otherwise. He's got the, he, he has zero macro hatches. Okay, my game didn't crash. It's back now. We're good. It just took a while. So, queen, not injecting at all. No larva queued up. Queen, not injecting at all. No larva saved up. Uh, queen, not injecting at all. No larva saved up. Like, this is fucking terrible for him, too. Like, he just doesn't have larva. This guy has, in total, 29 larva. And if you if you were to spam a bunch of lings again, his remax would go up to 129 supply. That's not enough. So even all my mistakes, if I had the buildings, I would have still won this game. 100%. I mean, yeah. that's the thing. I'm, such a, I'm in such a low league that uh, it's low-hanging fruit still. No, for so. sure. Now, the big thing I want to go into here, and we'll, we'll get out of this now because... The, the, the big point we need to cover here is macro time. And if we if we really went deeper and deeper and deeper into lo like the later minutes of the game, it would only show even more because uh, there was more problems we, that we really tried to cover throughout the whole game. But I will show you the first five minutes of, again, what you could have. And this is what we're, this is what we were talking about, how we'll go back and I'll give you now an example, like a quota you can aim for. I think this will be the best thing you could get right here because this will give you a real understanding of like what you're actually at with your stuff. And I would say don't worry about too much about like the other replay about like showing me a better example. It's totally fine. Uh, no, it, it has a, it's the same stuff. Yeah, it, it, yeah, I'm sure it's it's slightly better, but it, it I I really believe you know the BTG like get the macro right, and I'm not there yet. 
it's mechanic for sure. to fix it. So but this 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 replay will be perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. So I'll, I'll, I'll just take you to five minutes. We'll, well, I'll literally stop at it right at five minutes and we'll see where we're at. We'll compare it to the notepad I wrote down earlier about what you had at five minutes. We'll compare it to what we have at five minutes. And it's literally just as simple as going, don't fuck up your production at all. So we're stacking our close patches as much as we can. We'll go like, oh, you go there. New SCV just went to the other one. We're already done. And then now we're fixing the other patches. And now I'm, I need to keep watching my SCV on the bottom. And I'm like, cool. Make another one, we're almost ready. And now I have enough money to make a Rax. And then as soon as I have enough money to make an SCV, or make a gas, I will. So I don't have enough yet, and now I do. And I don't need to make an SCV first because we're way far away from finishing off. Now I make another SCV before production's done and we can fix the close patch I just took off. You go there and we're good to go again. And now this SCV, I can be like, hey, you building the racks, right click, shift, like hold shift, Hold shift, right click, and then right click. So we have a line that goes up and down. Okay, fix our gases again. Or fix that gas, put, fill it up with three. And I also specifically grabbed SCVs on far patches to do that. I didn't grab SCVs on close patches. Keep fixing SCVs, fill them up with two per patch so I can have an optimal mining and nothing's really shitty with three on one patch. And now let's rally an SCV to my natural because I'm about to make an orbital and I'm making a marine right now. So this guy scouts. This guy makes command center, and I make orbital. And now I re-rally my command center back to the main, and I make my command center right as we get here. And now I, we're good. To, I make a camera hockey out of that. We're good to go. Now I grab an SCV and I go make a depot, but I make a production first, and then I make a depot, and then I'll make my factory right after. And then I'm kind of starving on money right now, so we need to immediately drop that mule because I need it really bad. So we make an SCV and we make a mule go down immediately. And now we can grab an SCV. Let's just grab one and go make a uh, factory and then immediately go back to making that Marine and then make another SCV. Okay, and now we can take this SCV and we can start building depots at the natural because we're going to supply block otherwise if we don't. Okay, and Marines can kind of chill near the ramp in case the Zerg attacks us or some shit like that. And now we have a few Marines. Let's make a reactor here. It's all good. You can make one marine, two marine, three marine, whatever you want to do, and then make your reactor. You can literally make one marine and make a reactor immediately. That's also fine. Uh, yeah, I want to make sure you. The, oh, go ahead, sorry. And in the real, and the SCV saw no natural. So if this is opponent, you might have. Would you have added a bunker from the SCV returning, or so when do you make you, the bunker? I'm gonna pause. Sorry. Uh, no, 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 no. Just don't don't worry. I just I want to explain this. I want to explain this, but I don't I, I don't want to like pass by anything I'm going over. That's why the only reason why I paused it. Uh, so, I want you to know that if your tank is not delayed, you don't really need to bunker that badly. Honestly. Because what you're doing right now is like, you could totally make a bunker right away when you don't see a natural if you're like, ah, fuck, I feel like I need it. If you really want it, make a bunker. But I would say for now, just try to skip the bunker. Because you're, you're like, you're getting towards plat and Things need to start getting a little bit more crisp. If you, were, if I was teaching Silver League, I'd be like, make a bunker every time. Yeah, just do it. It's fine. It's gonna make it to where the, your macro fuck ups are gonna be a little bit more acceptable because you have a bunker that'll help you if you fuck something up. But if you make a bunker, it's gonna slow your build down. It will slow your build down because it's not free. But instead, what I want you to do, because you're again, you're like on the on the cusp of, <clears throat> on the cusp of platinum with this right now, which means you're getting to the the higher stages of like the the macro level where you need to like really start perfecting it so you can make your way into diamond league and then you can start multitasking so what i'm going to tell you to do is for now just try skipping the bunker prioritizing your tank and your production like all your production instead and then if you have a, if you have a tank out really fast it's so much more value than a bunker would be worth the only time you ever really truly need a bunker is if the guy is genuinely doing a one base all in and the effectiveness of when a player one base all ends you in gold to plat, like low plat gold, it's not great. Like I, I almost can guarantee you're gonna have a tank out in time for the almost every single time. Okay. Uh, okay. So and, yeah. and if and if I lose, you know, two percent of games, you know, because somebody did execute it fine early, then I'll I'll figure that out in a higher league, right? Like, yeah. I, I need to get my macro right first. Yeah. No. So so the if I lose to a couple of all ends is no 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 big deal. But so, let get, get tank out. Yeah. yeah. So I want to see when the tank arrives. 
No, for sure. I'll, I'll be starting it up in a second again. But I'll just, yeah. uh, just finish the bunker talk really fast. Uh, if you actually wanted to scout deeper into his base, if you, if you got really comfortable with the build overall and you're not fucking your timings up, Again, I don't want you to prioritize this because I don't want you to fuck this thing. I don't want you to be like, okay, so everything we talked about, now I want you to scout. And you're like, well, now I'm fucking everything up again. I don't macro anymore again. So don't prioritize scouting. But once you think you're ready to scout and you're like, I feel like I'm getting really good at this, you can test yourself and be like, okay, this game I scouted, but did I fuck up my production? Let's really pay attention to that. And if you did, you're not ready. Go back to producing and try again. It's fine. Uh, but if you did scout and you went, okay, this guy's super all in. Like this Zerg player has a Roach Warren or a Bane Nest before he's even taken a natural. I'm clearly gonna get all in. You can make a bunker then. But I want you to also understand that if here's a big deal. If you did genuinely get all in, the fact that you have a depot wall at the top of the ramp is also insanely fucking strong. Because it blocks them out of your base. And that's also why I always tell everybody, put your first tank on the high ground. Because it fucks over all ins like crazy. Like with this kind of a build. So, anyways, bunker, not the most important thing right now, honestly. Uh, I, I understand why you asked me, though. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, it, it only would need to happen if you, like, know the guy's going to do some crazy ass all in really fast and you can't have a tank in time. But that's it's not really the case that you're going to run into in Gold Lake very much, like, uh, almost at all. All right, so I will resume and I'm going to keep production rolling as much as possible. I'll start my second racks, I'll start my second gas, and uh, yeah, continue depots and all that shit. Okay, so keep making the CVs, make another depot, make this a orbital. Drop another mule. Okay, these buildings are done. And fill up the gas with our SCVs, it's fine. Uh, with the new SCVs that we're building. So we're just really quickly, I'm always hitting 4, 5, 4, 5, 4, 5, 4, 5. I'm checking this constantly to make sure I'm not fucking this up. I'm also glancing at the bars, and I'm checking things that I've initiated before periodically to make sure we're, we're not missing things as much as possible. Like, we're always trying to spend our money as optimally as we can. Okay, I'm rallying both my commanders down to the natural. And now we can make this a tech lab, make production, make a tank. First tank pops out at 348. And now we'll make a starport. We'll siege that bad boy right there. And now I'm going to try to maintain two SCVs per queue because I have two command centers now. And now we have to we can focus less on the individual CC itself. Okay, we got more Marines pumping. And now let's make our starport. And now we're walled off, which is really nice. Keep dropping mules every time we can. Pull this SCV inside. Get our tank right here situated. Keep making SCVs. Make another depot. So I'm, I'm just literally trying to maintain production on everything. That's all I'm doing. Maintain production, and when I have any excess money, we'll add in things like upgrade, for instance. Okay, we can make an orbital. Or not an orbital, sorry. We can make a, uh, a reactor on my starport. Okay, we're basically fully saturated here, so now we can get ready to add in uh, more of our stuff. So right now, go ahead and rewind it, because we're right at five minutes, okay? So this quota right here for you will be what we're talking about. Now let's look and see what you had, okay? Really fast. In your five-minute example, we had 62 out of 78 supply. In this example right now that I just gave you, we have 69 out of 86. So we're a little bit ahead overall already. Then, says SCV count, you have 38 and we have 40. So we're a little bit ahead in SCVs. So you can, t like, you've missed a couple SCVs. Not, it, uh, this, up to this point in the game, it wasn't the worst. Like we said before, it's like you, you missed a few seconds here, a few seconds there. But overall, you are a couple SCVs behind. But now here's the fucking really big one. In production, you are, it, like, it, it wasn't even production. It was like, because again, the production represents the supply. We have 69, you have 62. But overall, you had two tanks and 10 Marines. Right all right, right now, we have three tanks and 18 Marines already at five minutes. It's just at five minutes. So we are, we have a shitload more units overall that we're working with here. And then 
No third CC. We also don't have our third CC yet. We're we are getting ready to be able to afford it in a second, though, because we have almost 400 minerals and we're we're, we're mostly maintaining production. Like we we'll do another round and then we'll probably make it. And then another thing was was your starport wasn't done yet. It was 25 out of 36 seconds into production. So our starport in this game, right at five minutes, was because it cancels my reactor when I left the game. Pause it right at 4:59. So our react, our we had a starport that was done. The starport for you was it was 11 seconds from being done, but we also have a reactor that is going to be 11 seconds in production. So we're, our starport overall, in terms of reactor being put on it as well, is 22 seconds ahead of your starport in this game. And the difference is, in your game, the reason why there is a difference here, is because of the fact that there were buildings that were not being utilized as fast as they could have been while you had money to spare. And oh, you did a gas yeah. priority over a mineral priority. So you had extra gas that you that you didn't need at earlier in the game, which is going to slow down everything besides your tanks. Like Think about it like this, okay? It's actually really relevant. The only thing gas is doing for us is it's giving us our tech path and our upgrade of stim pack. And it, like eventually our engineering bay upgrades. But instead what you had was... You had more gas with more SCVs off the mineral line and more SCVs on the gas. And you had more of a gas bank. And you had actually one tank less than us. And you had one. You had a starport that wasn't uh, like nearly as far in production by 22 seconds. So you were actually behind. Like the, only, the only thing, if we went back and really watched it again, your stim pack is probably faster. But stim pack doesn't really matter here because you're not even doing a timing attack. You're doing a defensive setup posture. Like, obviously, stim pack matters. But... It, it's not a priority. Like, if we get Stimpak and then we have it and we're just sitting on it forever, it doesn't need to be a priority over, like, the tanks and over the starport and over our economy, if that makes sense. Yeah, because the Stimpak doesn't compound over time. You've got, once you've got it, you've got it. But if you make a Marine, you get it for the rest of the game, right? Like, no, so, yeah, for so sure. It's, the, even the bigger one is the SCV. The, the SCV is the yeah, huge one. Yeah, the SCV. Because it actually, yeah. like, it's defensively doing it's, a job for you. So it's SCV first, unit production second, tech path third, third command center and upgrade paths is that kind of the order yeah uh, for sure i would have made a third cc 100 i would have made a third cc so th uh, this is a good way to think about it okay this is actually i hope this makes sense but this is a good way to think about it prioritize your mineral line first and then prioritize your gas so if you noticed when i took my second gas i didn't rip off the mineral line and fill up the gas i let new scvs build into yeah, it because so, yeah. i wanted to prioritize the mineral line now <clears throat> these two gases think about what they can afford okay <clears throat> now this is not, this is something that is not going to make a whole lot of sense immediately that's why I wanna, I'm trying to make this make as much sense as possible it's not going to be like oh you can afford everything with these two gases but these two gases for sure can do this maintain tank production and slowly add on your tech like your add-ons for your buildings and your starport and your stim pack these two gases can totally afford that, as we've seen here, because I don't even have these gases right now, and I have all this shit. But the main, again, priority is production first, tech later. Te tech is the afterthought after production first. The worst thing in the world you can do is make keep prioritizing more buildings first over production, and then not producing units. It goes back to what you were having the problem with before, where you just don't build units and you just build other shit. Like you, because the thing you did was you built like a bunch of ng bays and you built double gas and you built other shit around your base. And then you had all these open expenses that you can't afford. So if you just build what you can afford, it makes the build flow way better. So these represent initial tech path, essentially. The first two gases in my main represent initial tech path, which is a one-time expense. And it's also my tanks, which are also going to be, in this game particularly, like in, in Gold League and Platinum League, that is also going to be a one-time expense because you're going to make four tanks and you're literally going to stop. You're not making tanks until you have 30 of them or 20 of them. You're just stopping at four tanks. And you're leaving yeah, them with yeah. your base for defense and shit. And then the gas at the natural, you add, when you add that on, you're going to have more gas again to open up to more things. And now this will help you with things like now you can add on another gas expense like your NG bay upgrades. So you can pair this gas with engineering bays. And you can do those gases when you're fully saturated. So prioritize mineral line first. Then go gas, and when you then take the gas, take energy base. 
Otherwise, you're doing mineral focus things all the time, like a third CC, can maintaining production on your marines and stuff like that. And when you take a third CC, you can take two more racks. That's even more minerals again, stuff like that. Love it. Yeah, love it. Awesome. I'm gonna get this nail. This this beginning. Hell yeah. I need to get my build orders there. And then, no, for uh, sure. Uh, and, 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 that's awesome. Um, and, and then from here, yeah. there's a there's a big tip I want to give you too, because this is something really relevant that I, I did say, but I want to say it in like the series. But I'll say it right now because I wanted to like really hit home here. I want you. This is a quota for you. Okay, pacing. This is gonna tell you if you're doing it well or not. And this should one this piece of information should 100% speed up your max out and your remax as well. From the point when you make your third command center, which is going to be around maybe like five minutes and like 15 seconds, okay? Roughly. That's if you're doing a great job. Like, it could be like anywhere, just know if you make your third command center anywhere between 5.15 to 5.30, I give you a gold star. You're doing great. But from that point on, as soon as you make your third command center, okay? As soon as you make it, you need to be going like this. Third command center is done. Make that fucker into an orbital. And then make two more like make two more racks with it as well. So you're gonna go up to five racks with the third CC. And then as soon as it's an orbital, lift it off, land it. And then as soon as you lift off the third orbital, as soon as it's as soon as the orbital is lifted off and going to the third, immediately start a fourth base. And then from that point on, the rest of the game, never stop making a command center. It's done, lift it off, move it to a new base, make a new one. It's done, lift it off, land it to a new base, make a new one, make a new one, make it like you do it repeatedly. Until you literally, like I said before, until you have like 10 or like 15 command centers. And then every time you make a command center, pair that thing with two more racks. Two more racks. Two more racks. Put them wherever the hell you want. Two more racks. 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 Uh, two more racks. I don't care where you put them. Just put them down. Two more racks in a command center. Two more racks in a command center. Two more racks in a command center. And you do this until you have literally like 15 barracks. And then with your last one, once you have like 15 racks, just throw like the last five racks down all at once. And those are going to be like all your tech labs. So when you go two more, two more, two more, two more, those are all reactor, 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 reactor. And your final like uh, from like 15 to like now you're going to finally go up to like 20. You make uh, again like this the last five at once. Just make all fuck all the last five tech labs. That way if you need to, you can add in marauders if you need to. Otherwise, you can just go pure marines as well. It just gives you options. You can like because marauders are tanky and they actually add some durability to your army. So does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it does. It does. It's cool. I really love the way that you give a pathway to improve. Like, like, you know, I was, as I say, I was, a, I was, capping out with what I was doing. This, this, I feel re-energized about. No oh, hell yeah, this. fuck yeah, man. It's, I mean, it's gonna help you if you do what I'm saying and you, you really focus on not missing production on your buildings, you are going to get so much better, so much faster. Because you're gonna be like, wait, whoa, okay. Like that's that's why I think that that game you, I'm not gonna lie, the game you gave me to watch with you was perfect because I think the best part about the entire game was obviously seeing your mistakes that you're making throughout the game, which we can talk about, but the muta part. Priorities. Just fucking make units. Not try to like attack shit and like make a bunch of turrets and get crazy. Just make stuff and just do the anthill analogy and just fucking run them over with mass. Num win in numbers all the time, no matter what race you are. It does not matter. It works for all three. Uh, and it will actually make your macro up to... It, it basically, if you can do this concept... It levels your macro up to a point that it needs to be to have a chance in Diamond League. Like, it, this is a baseline for Diamond League. And then the reason why Diamond League is a lot harder is because the, ma the macro element of it is mandatory. And then the micro multitask element of it is then what you work on then. And that makes the yeah, players yeah, yeah. differentiate from each other. But I, you know, yeah, that's... that's uh several promotions away from no me, for so. sure it's, it's something to look that's forward awesome. to it's no no it's, 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 it's super cool um yeah uh, uh any any thanks so much no, i appreciate for sure. it hell yeah man any any questions about anything before we wrap it up no i, I got everything um would you mind sharing that uh, uh, I'll, I'll you five minutes? for sure yeah, yeah. Uh, also so uh it. so basically um, just to you. let you know how it's gonna go uh i don't know how often you use discord but if you prefer, I guess I can email you, and if it's up, it's up to you. I can either do it through Discord or, through, or do it through email, but I will send you this replay and also the VOD of what we just talked about. I'll, I'll make, I'll edit it out, I'll upload it to YouTube, and I'll send you the link on the YouTube video so you can rewatch this coaching lesson repeatedly as many times as you like, and I'll send you that all that by tomorrow. Perfect. Well, thank you. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to 
get this clean, and then I'll schedule another lesson when I've got these things clean, and we can go to the next stage. All right, cool. Sounds good. That's awesome. Uh, do you have Thanks a so much, uh, uh, just to make sure I'm going to not screw you over? Do you have a preference on email or Discord, or do you care? I'll, otherwise, I'll just send it on Discord. Mind. Okay. I'll figure it out. Okay. Whatever's I'll, easier for you. I'll just send it on Discord then because it's super fast. Uh, yeah. Perfect. All right, man. Well, thank you. I'll good luck, and I look forward to to talking to you again in the future and seeing how things go. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Really appreciate it. Enjoy your stream. Yo, thanks, thanks man. so much. Have a good day. I love, by the way, I love your content. Really love it. Amazing. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. That's actually. It's, it's, All right. Uh, I'm glad you enjoy it, and uh, I really thank you very much for doing a coaching lesson, and uh, good luck, man. Cheers. Thanks. All right. See you, dude. All right, guys. That's been a uh, coaching lesson uh, with our boy Red Busman. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope this helped any terror players out there like that are struggling with macro as well to figure out their what's going on and hopefully ideas on how to improve and really kind of like this is like kind of like a fine tuning of be the GM version type of thing like really just specifying things. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Till then, good luck and peace.